think uh, the Course in Miracles talks of more about of an ego type thing. My feeling around that is what's, what's the sense of being the one who has an ego or the one who loses an ego? What is that that's prior to the idea of an ego? Yeah, that to me, that's where the bondage of self is. The bondage of self is, the one, is a one who has the ego and a one who loses the ego. So it's different. I don't see it as... I think the ego, in a way, is an, uh, an objectification of self by self, really. So, so in this, I think I've got to remember where it is, this page. I don't know what he's talking about, the first sentence, because I, and I've talked to people who know a lot this book a lot better than I do, but I think he's implying the idea of this, this activity of selfie. That's what I call it, yeah? A mental process, pretty much a three-pronged mental process. There's the thought system, there's the memories, and there's perceptions, yeah? So the perception sees things, the memories picture you, as, you and me as a thing, and the thought system keeps implying that we're a thing. So here he goes, he goes, this is on page 468, he goes, Yet we have heard a very similar description earlier, but it was not of you. That could be it, right? <laughs> you just say that, because whatever can be described is not of you. So whatever description you have of you is not of you. <laughs> Yet we have heard a similar description early, earlier, but it was not of you. But, this, but still the strange idea that, to me, humbly, that you're a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. That's the strange idea, which it does accurately describe you think is you. And the key is the think, to me. What you are could, is, could never be what it thinks it is, or what the thinking thinks it is. What you are could never be what the thinking thinks it is. Yeah, it's impossible. So, but, str this, but this still the strange idea which it does accurately describe you think is you. So in a way, what you can accurately describe is really an activity, yeah, or a bunch of activities that keep reinforcing and pointing at and presupposing and inferring and assuming that there's a thing behind all this. Yeah? That's basically what's happening. Yeah? You, can, you can never accurately describe what you're not. Well, you can because what you're not is an activity. It's not a, there's, no, there's not you and then another you. There's what you're not is an activity that implies it's you. So... But the state, all right, so reason would tell you, or you could say wisdom would tell you, that the world you see through eyes that are not yours must make no sense to you. So the eyes, these are not your eyes, yeah? That's why the thoughts seem to have so much sway over someone, because they sound like your, your voice, what you call your voice, but it's not your voice. It's being produced by these little chords here. <laughs> and somehow, that, that which is being produced suddenly becomes yours. <laughs> so it, uh, and therefore, when a thought sounds like you, you're more apt to be listening to it. <laughs> because you're very interested in you. <laughs> the whole mental process is extremely interested in you, or in a you. It's so interested in a you, it can seem to be you. <laughs> <laughs> so wisdom would tell you that the world you see through eyes that are not yours must make no sense to you. So this eyes, I see you as something different from me. And in all this space, I have no idea what it is. So it becomes insignificant to my story. <laughs> and I, it just makes absolutely no sense that this is so that you and I could sit here being more preoccupied by what's not happening than being engaged in what's happening, which is right now. You know, it just makes absolutely no sense. If like a little kid came up and saw us, he would think we were insane. <laughs> he would just... <laughs> so, to whom would seeing such as this... So what is this, seeing such as this? It's called self-centeredness, really, yeah? So you're, it's actually a form of looking. It's not seeing. Yeah. 
it's seeing that's been bastardized in a sense or has been sort of the seeing has been put into a into a tube right a self-centered way of looking so there it is seeing but now it's not dispersed and open it's focused and everything is about you yeah so everything so life is seen as how it pertains to you the you that you're not so how could that actually make sense to you all of that narration all of the interpretations of this place applying to what you're not how could it make make sense to what you are it wouldn't it's impossible it's not going to swallow what this situation <laughs> so to whom would seeing such as this send back its messages so who, to whom would seeing such as this send back its messages self sending it sends back its messages to the seer to the body to the thing that's to whom it sends back its message basically to the brain let's say but the idea of to whom it's sending back its message is you surely not you <laughs> so he just, just <laughs> he just puts an end to that whose sight is wholly independent of the eyes that look upon the world so this is in how we see our nature is seeing yeah not vision but seeing yeah this is perception in a sense and it can be changed by just going like this I could change how everything looks by just putting a pair of glasses on yeah that's how true it is you can change everything like that to whom would seeing such as this send back its messages surely not you whose sight is wholly independent of the eyes that look upon the world if this is not your vision, what can it show to you? Well, what it can show to you is it's not your vision. That's its, that's its value. Its value is <laughs> we seem to have forgotten what we are. So in a way, we, we get back to where we never left by negating what we think we are. See, it's a negating of a phantom reference point. So it looks like we did something, but when it's done, it, nothing ever had to be done, yeah? So you look like you got out of something, but when you're out of something, you realize you were never in it. So did you ever get out of it, yeah? It's such a beautiful hit. The, tra the interpretation here is I got out of something, you know, I da da da. But when you really get out of something the, and it stabilizes, it shows you you were never in it. So. Being out of it is never escaping from what you're in. It's seeing you're never in it. That's being out of it. Yeah, it's a different logic than the way our head thinks. Our head thinks, oh, I'm in something, and I'm going to get out of something. But the getting out of something reinforces the truth of being in something, which is not true. So how is it going to work out? Not well. You're going to be in and out quite a lot. You're going to be, you'll finally get out of it, like at the retreat, and then you'll leave the retreat two hours later, you're back in it. So you go, Jesus Christ. So what does the logic of the head do? It says, well, you got to go to a longer retreat. So you got a few hours of relief. If you did more, you'd get more hours of relief. But it's not a solution. A solution that's really a solution doesn't have to be re-engaged it puts an end to what never occurred that's a solution yeah it puts an end to what never occurred it's all occurring but no nothing ever occurred yeah nothing has ever come to pass it's just passing so if you just came in I'm just riffing on a course in miracles thing you ever hear of it course oh it's all right so so well, I'm going to go back and just quickly review, just catch up. So, so here it goes. <laughs> we'll start with, but still the strange idea. Now, to me, the strange idea is that we're a long-lasting, independent, separate entity, a thing. Yes? That's the strange idea. You didn't, I don't believe you had it when you were a little baby. It came, you know, the mental state proposed it and then just started reinforcing it, and there you go. Yeah? So... But, st but this strange idea, which it does accur accurately describe, so that he was riffing on what you're not. And what you're not can be described unbelievably because it's just a set of activities. There is not, there's no not in what you're not. There's just what. 
Yeah? So the activities, activities. So oh, here's another one. All right. We'll stick. Whoever comes in late, you're going to just get with the flow here. So, but still the strange idea, the idea of being a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. It's not saying, and I'm just implying, I believe that's what it means, to me anyway. Which it does describe, you think is you. See, this is the case. The mental state is constantly describing what you are. It's constantly, yeah? It's constantly inferring what you are. And it, the memory is a real tool for it, because... That which isn't so can seem to be so if it's remembered. So if it was remembered that it was so, and it's remembered that it will be so by worrying about it, that's a form of remembering, then it has a sense of being so now. Yeah? It's just produced. It's not true. And if you, predict, if you cut the production line, there ain't no light emitting. There is no self. It's not, self and it's not self-sustaining. It's out, out, we're sustaining it, in a sense. Yeah? It's our blood that gives life to the, let's say, the parasitical movement. The parasitical movement doesn't have any blood of its own. It sucks our blood in a way. Yeah. So, reason would tell you that the world you see through eyes that are not yours must make no sense to you. So, we're looking through these eyes, seemingly, yeah? And all this information is being collated by the brain. And the brain tells that we're a thing in a world of things, in a world of time, in a world of separation, in a world of this, in a world of that. Yeah? And he keeps informing us of that all day through the interpretation of the perceptions, the reliance on memories, and then the thought system. Yeah? But reason or wisdom would tell you that the world you see through eyes that are not yours yeah? would <laughs> must make no sense to you. To whom would seeing such as this send back its messages? Obviously, the you that you're not. Surely not you, whose sight is wholly independent of the eyes that look upon the world. Yes? So when I say seeing, I'm not talking about eye vision. I'm talking about awareness, yeah? That awareness, that seeing, isn't defined by, by the, the, mis, the misperception of the senses, yes? It sees very, very clearly because it's totally independent of it. It's not in cahoots with the activity. It's, it's the context of all this. Yeah? It's like the sky is not going to get wet when it rains. Yeah? The sky doesn't get, like, get cut open on July 4th when there's explosions in it. The sky could have 800,000 clouds go through it, yet it never turns into a cloud. Yeah? So big M mind is sort of like a sky, like today. This, it's cloudless sky, so all this shit's flying through it, appearing in it, but what appears in it has no effect on it. Yeah? That's sort of what it's like. That's what mind is like, yeah? Big mind, yeah. Surely not, who's not, all right. If this is not your vision, what can it show to you? Exactly that, it can show to you it's not your vision. So, so you'll stop relying on it because the reliance on it isn't based on its acumen or accuracy. It's based on it. It's implying to be you. That's the whole point. You're engaged with it. The whole glue, the stickum is the cherishing of self. Yeah, it's an activity. You don't see it. You didn't do it like at 1234 on Thursday. It's an activity that's going on. The mental state is constantly assuming you're something, yeah? And the thought system's constantly reapplying that assumption on all the thoughts that are called yours, yeah? As soon as you be claim the thoughts, suddenly the thoughts have you, and they have you as a body. As soon as the feelings are claimed by my feelings, now those feelings now claim you as the feeler, yeah? Soon as there's the idea that you're the actor of the actions, now the actions own you as the actor. So one thought can ruin your day. One thought. One thought can ruin a Hawaii vacation. One little, one little weird inquiry like, where was she last night, can ruin a 20-year relationship. It can just start off and just, it just like a snowball, and uh, really a snowball in hell. It's totally impossible. 
but it seems to be happening. It's like a snowball in hell. <laughs> there could be a snowball in hell. <laughs> so if this is not your vision, what can I show you? The brain cannot interpret. This is so beautiful to me. The brain cannot interpret what your vision sees. What you truly are, the brain cannot interpret. It's beautiful. It's stumped, let's say. It's completely stumped. So to the point where it has to ignore that possibility completely because it would probably just explode. Yeah? So the brain cannot interpret what your vision sees. This you would understand. The brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. The brain, that's collating all this seeming information, is directing all of that information to imply, to, to point at the sense of being the one who's here as a body. Yes? So the brain interprets to the body of which it is a part. It does not interpret to the spirit, let's say. It interprets to the body. So if you're... If there's a sense of, if, see for me, thoughts, you, you're going to hear thoughts because you're conscious. But the, I, then there's a change when there's a listening to them. It's a different flavor. So y- you have to hear thoughts because you're awake in a sense. And they're appearing just like a bird would fly by and I would see it. Yeah? If I was looking that direction, the consciousness sees what arises. So the thoughts arise, but then when there's a listening to the thought, then there's an engagement that happens, and suddenly a whole dynamic that's impossible seems to be true. Yeah. I think this is the most important one. The brain interprets to the body of which it is a part, but what it says you cannot understand, yet you have listened to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, not you have heard it. We all hear it, but you have listened to it. That's what starts the whole ball game. And long and hard you tried to understand its messages. <laughs> Usually at two in the morning <laughs> when you want to be asleep. <laughs> thinking is never going to reveal thinking. <laughs> You're never going to see the failedness of thinking by thinking about it. <laughs> you see it by another, well, whatever. <laughs> you have not realized, see, you have not realized, or we have not realized, it is impossible to understand what fails entirely to reach you. <laughs> if something doesn't reach you, then there's a whole lot of room for interpretation. <laughs> a huge amount of that I missed it, <laughs> that I did get it. <laughs> You have received no messages at all, you understand. (laughs) Yeah, why the hell should I be worrying about next week when there is no next week? (laughs) Why should Thursday have more sway on Saturday than Saturday does? That makes no fucking sense to me. What? Why? Why? Am I living more influenced by what's not happening than what's happening? That seems totally insane. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and remember, thinking is always about. It's not like a smart bomb. It's very vague. It thinks about something. <laughs> it really, it thinks about nothing. And by thinking about nothing, then something seems to appear. Really, it just coagulates, makes like a little eddy, and then suddenly there's the fish or there's the bird. (laughs) But without this, there wouldn't be like that. You got to see our, we have to, you know, it's good to see our role here. We're we're the dreaming of this event. Yeah, we're we're not like an, you know, uh, an object that's being imposed upon by this great dream. We're dreaming. We're giving everything all the meaning it has. 
I mean, how can you escape the responsibility of that? It can't, there's no way out of that statement, if you believe it or not, if you just let it hit you. It's, it uses everywhere, you know, you've given everything, all the meaning, that's two absolutes. Everything includes everything. And all is pretty much, there's no out, exit out of all. <laughs> you know, so you and I give everything all the meaning it has. Because that which we give meaning to has no meaning to give to anything other than the meaning we give it. Other than the, the power we give it. Just like it says in the Course that you and I are the dreaming. I don't like the dreamer because it implies a noun. But you and I are the dreaming of the dream. We forget that we're dreaming. Now how the hell does that happen? I don't believe that's possible. So it can only seem to happen, which means it appears to be true or false to us. So by identifying as, an, as the dreamt, as an object, we forget that we're dreaming, seemingly. Yeah? And in that condition, we give everything we're dreaming, thoughts, everything, the power to affect us. That sounds like everyone's day. It's like the diagnostic of everyone's day. If it was a car, you wouldn't, wouldn't be like a European specialist. Every fucking car would come in and you could diagnose it. Hey, yes, all right. You and I are dreaming this dream. What? You forgot you're dreaming. How? I don't believe so. Do you call yourself Buick? Yes, there you go. You are now, you're the dreamt that thinks, but you're the dreaming. All right, so now in that case, and what you're doing is you're giving all the, all the, potholes and the obstacles and the traffic, all the, all the ability to affect you. What? Oh, yeah. So it says, so what would happen if you saw that you weren't the dreamt or you started to entertain just a vague possibility? You may not be that, yeah? You may be wholly independent of these eyes that see a world. Who knows? So if you see what you're not, that's, the, that's what you are. It's the seeing of what you're not. That's what you are. That's your pureness in activity. You are being, and what you are is being what you are, which is seeing, and what does seeing do? It sees what it's not. Yeah. It sees all that's appearing in it. Yeah. So in a way, the Course, in a sense, and other great, I believe, great masters, they forego the path of affirmation. They just go to negation. They just negate the reference that you're trying to plot all your courses from. And if you, because if you see, because you can buy a lot of maps from LA and they can be perfect maps of how to get to a LA, but if you made a mistake of where you're leaving from, you're not gonna get to LA. If you think you're in Idaho when you're in Nebraska and you follow the map to LA, you're gonna not get there. So the whole point is, what's the, what's the reference that you assume to be the starting point? If it's off, it changes all the rules of the game. It's like, it's like if Monopoly started at Baltic, Baltic Place, yeah, the whole Monopoly game would look different. But then you go, if you go to square zero, you'll see the same game totally different. Exact, totally different, with no thought of effort. There won't be, you won't be efforting this try to see it different. You won't be affirming that it's different. You will see it different. And there will be no thought of effort involved in it. So then he goes off here. Hold on. You have not realized it is impossible to understand what fails entirely to reach you. You have received no messages at all you understand, for you have listened to what can never communicate at all. <laughs> think then, please don't, please, but think then what happens. Denying what you are. See now, by affirming this, you don't see that it's a denial of what you are, right? By the constant affirmation that you are this, it's actually a denial of what you are. Yeah? So the act of affirmation of this is a passive denial of what you are. And the trippy thing is, when this thing, it's like uh, we have a statement in recovery called self can't get out of self. So if selfing is the act of the mental state playing God, 
And then it's, if it wants to now become God, it's going to become God as the bigger God in the equation. Yeah? Because the self, that which is playing God, if you go stop playing God, stop playing God would be playing God. Yes, you can never escape the little Chinese thumb torture thing. So, all right, I'm talking to what's playing God. Stop playing God. So if it stops playing, tries to stop playing God, that's playing God. So it can never get out, yeah? Because it, every time it tries to get out, it's reaffirming the fact that it's in, and that's not the fact. The fact is you're not in. That's the getting out. It's through negation, in a sense, that that is the true affirmation here. That's the life-affirming affirmation is negation. You see what you're not. You hear these descriptions of what you're not. You go to, let's say, an Enneagram thing, if you ever heard of that, where an old Sufi methodology that explained every possible characteristic of every fucking make of car, of all these action figures, and made nine basic divisions and said, and there's two little subdivisions, so there's 27 personalities that can only, combinations of all these are all everybody. And then you hear that and immediately think, and they give you numbers, then you leave the, the retreat and you go, I'm a four. You've added another fucking identity. No, you're a four, therefore you're not a four. Yeah? This, this is the way, this is how it works. You realize you're a Ford, you drive like a Ford, you smell like a Ford, you turn like a Ford, and therefore you're not a Ford. <laughs> yeah? You hear the description of what you are, a complete beautiful description of what you think you are, and by re seeing it, you realize you're not. Yeah? So you get out by realizing you were never in. That's the only way it works. If you get out of what you think you're in, you're going to be in what you thought you're in again. Because you don't see. You don't, the in and out, that's not it. It's how it's held. You're in, you're out. That's what you want to get out of. What you want to get out of is the one that thinks it was in and the one that thinks it's out. Yeah? If you see that, it's like... Who wants, who cares about an ego getting one or losing one? But the sense of who has the ego and who has, who has now the absence of the ego, that's where the freedom lies. Is seeing you're not the one is where the freedom is. And how do you see that? Maybe you need to have the one described in beautiful terms, in very cryptic terms, in very clear terms, to trick the mind to finally realize, hey, I may not be that. Yeah? And then the dream will get happier. And it doesn't mean it's going to go on infinitely. It's going to end. It's going to end. Yeah? It doesn't go the dream gets happier, happier odd infinitum. No, the dream gets happier. And as the happy as it gets, it's getting really close to <laughs> the dreaming chain. You know, but <laughs> it isn't like, it's not like you're going to be on holiday for 80 years. You know, <laughs> the dreams, you and I are going to dream ourselves out of this dream. As we do, the dream will get happier, but not extend it forever. It's going to end. Not even end. It never happened. Yeah? The dreaming will stop. Nothing will end, but the dreaming will stop. The mind will go, go okay, I've had enough of this. And, and as the Course says, in the Course's view, this never even happened. <laughs> to me, I just, just think it's awesome news. Yeah? Because that which you've been thinking about, let's say you've had a significant other and you maybe thought, seemingly there was like 5,000 thoughts about her or him. Yeah? And then maybe you have two kids and there was like 80,000 thoughts or 100,000 thoughts. And then you look at how many thoughts there have been about you. <laughs> You know, like, the graph goes, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's been all about you all the fucking time. <laughs> the kids were about you. The other was about you. <laughs> You're all that it wants to think about. <laughs> and
And if the my, if the my is preceding that vague sense of being the one who's thinking, if that my is preceding all the thoughts, I'm telling you, you're like on the tattoo table for hours. You're just getting tattooed constantly. And you're thinking it's ink. I swear, this is me. <laughs> all the memories, boom, boom, boom. They're just pasted on nothing, and then suddenly they take that an appearance of some kind of body, and then that you start from there. Take the memories away, take the thoughts away. There's nothing here. And that's everything. Did you notice no one comes back here? Like if Ali left or this face left, then you're not going to see another Paul here, ever. We're thinking this is like the end-all, be-all. I'm telling you, most people who have left here have never... Jesus came back for three days. He couldn't take it any longer. He left immediately. I mean, people, no one's coming back here. No one's like signing up to get here. It's all self-arrogance. So we're, we're the crown of creation. Who said that? A person? So yes, there is a solution. From the solution's view, there is no problem. It's, an act, it's all activity. And if you're engaged with it, it will seem as real as real can be, what you are. And if you're not, it will seem, it's sort of like the Zen thing, where it says, first there is the mountain, then there is no mountain, then there's the mountain again. I, I would add another one. I would say, first there is no mountain, then there is a mountain, then there is no mountain, and then there's a mountain again. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how I would see it. So by the fourth time when the mountain appears, there seems to be a mountain, but it's like a mirage. You know there's no water there, but it looks like it's still there. Yeah? It's so the way you travel is lighter. And after a while, the only thing this action figure really basically ever wanted was an ease and comfort in its own skin and in the circumstances it's in. Yeah? And I'll tell you, this body will do a lot better when it's not the center of the universe. When it's not the object of all the fucking thoughts. It really will. It could actually thrive when that giant mental hen gets off of it. I've seen it. I've seen it in myself. I've had like uh, total resurrections here. I look totally different every seven years. <laughs> fucking, it really does. Things happen. It's unbelievable. I had sinus problems, and now they're finally really clearing up. It's amazing. You know, I haven't taken any sinus medicine, nothing. It's just finally, things just start happening. The dream gets happier in a lot of ways. Yeah. So, yeah. I truly believe if... you could become healthily suspicious of the thought system, it would go a long way, yeah? And then maybe see that vagueness of the my, because it, the thoughts aren't what, there's no cause of any bondage. It can only reach a level of seemingly so, yes? In other words, we have to be fooled to take it to be so. So the thought system, the thoughts don't bind us, but they're used to bind us by the my. The sense of their our thoughts, yeah? Feelings are just feelings. But when they're captured and used, it's like a, dun a, a herd of donkey, and then the mental process puts a tail on them all. It's that tail that you don't notice. It's that my, that feeling that I'm the thinker or I'm the thought about. That's, what, that's the constant inferring and a presupposing and assuming that you're a body. I mean, constantly. And if you go into your memories or the memories kick in, all you can be seen as back there is a body. The only way you can be thought about in the past is as a body. The only way you can be worried about you as in the future is as a body. What then, if you ever watch thoughts sometimes, you can see it in a real clear way in addiction. If you have a little relief from that which accelerated the addiction like the drugs or the alcohol you'll see the head the thoughts now have a certain convincing tone they're attempting to convince you of something who are the hell are they selling their product to 
I mean, it's like a salesman at the door. You're wide, the door's wide open. You're there, and then, oh, you know, everyone's fucking with you. Who are they talking to up there? Yeah? And then suddenly, if they buy your interest in the story, immediately they're talking as you. The thoughts now are just talking. At, you're going right to the liquor store. <laughs> you're just fucking going. In other words, it's like, it's like, a, it's like you're a horse in a stable. And you've been ridden many times by this really nasty, vicious, sadistic jockey. And so you see it coming, and you, look, you get this sense, you know, you're fucking getting really kicking everything. But it's going, don't worry, it'll be different this time. You don't know about and then you're, and then it's petting you, and then it gets on you, and then you're on a run. You're just fucking on a run, and you're being used for transportation. I believe we're always used constantly for transportation, but it's more noticeable in addiction because it's unbelievable. You could be at, you know, a Thanksgiving dinner, cutting the turkey, and then you go into the kitchen, have a swig of vodka, <laughs> you're out the back door, and you're robbing banks and everything like that. <laughs> like that, in like an hour or two. And you make it back, and, you know, for the football game. And <laughs> what, what happened? <laughs> so... There's a solution. The GPS where we're being directed by is a failed system. It's a failed system. If you're being led by thought, it's a failed system. It can only see the past, and therefore it sees nothing. Yes? And if you ever done I remember I used to go out listening to the head, and I just wanted to have fun. So it would tell me, it knew what I thought, you know, it had an idea of fun, which was, all right, go to the bar, drink some beers, cop some Coke go to a club, dance. And then I would follow that many, many times. And a lot of times I'd end up in jail, you know, around 12 at night, one o'clock night, three at night. Yeah? So I'd get out of jail, and then about two days later, I'd do the same. I'd punch in, oh, Jeep, oh, wise GPS. How can I, give me a map to get to happy, joyous, and free. Ching, all right. Do the same fucking, end up in jail again. Yeah? Now that's a freaking failed system, yes? Its maps are from 1970. It has nowhere, it has no idea what's going on, but it just has such an assurance. It's like that. It's in your voice, you know what I mean? So can you imagine if you were driving in a car and it had your voice, the GPS? I did a talk in, outside of Boston. We got there really late in the rural area, and there was this commotion near a railroad track, and the cops came over to us. We had to wait for a half hour, and they said, oh, some lady made a ride on the railroad tracks following her GPS. And she drove about 15 yards on the railroad traps. Now we gotta pull her out, right? She just, she must have sensed that something was awry, but no, she just had total faith. You know, okay, it's, your destination is 200 yards. Go, 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 you know? I mean, it's insane. It's <laughs> That's what's happening here. All right, that's it, eh? Any questions? No?